and the value which is impressed us in. So thank you for your words. Um, it is a privilege to have Dr. S. S. Hati amongst us. I would request sir to share his learned words and insights with Okay, firstly, uh, I'd like to say a, a text written by Guru Govind Singh Ji in the Zafar Nama. He had written, Chunkar Azama Hilte Darguzast Halalas Burdan Ba Shamshir Tast. This is written in Persian. It was written at a time when Guruji's four sons, he had lost his four sons, he had lost his wife, he had lost his mother and he was distorted and destroyed. Any normal person like you and me probably at that time would be down with fear and would be completely out of his senses. But Guruji was Guruji after all. He had his wisdom. He had self-control. That is what made Guru a Guru. That he had self-control. He was not a superhuman but he just was a special person with a lot of self-control. And he maintained that self-control and wrote these words to Aurangzeb which said that a time comes in your life when you should not tolerate any more nonsense and you should fight against it. This was the kind of conviction that Guruji had. As far as astrology is concerned, there is a sentence in my novel which says that all days are good for me, all numbers are lucky for me. I don't care what the stars have to say. I would do what I have to do. In simple terms if I say. So, it was also written in Guru Granth Sahib that one thing weakens a human being and that is superstition and fear. If you follow fear, if you follow superstition, that will weaken you. If you want to liberate yourself, forget superstition, forget fear and you will have no <coughs> limits on what you can achieve. Astrology is a science in some respects and it guides you to some limits. But a guide, it should be used as a guide only, not as a principle in your life. So yes, why not? If someone believes in it, you can use it as a guide but should not follow it per se. If it is right, if it is morally correct, you must do it, if it is not harming anybody. And as far as the uh, text is concern, concerned that whether I had problem writing or not, so the wonderful experience of being in army is that you deal with people from all walks of life, all states. In my pardon, I have got Sikhs, I have got Hindus, I have got Maharashtrians in army, I have got Nepalis, I have got Gujaratis, I have got Maharashtrians, I have got people from Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Assam, Manipur, you name a place. We have even been to other countries and met people there. So this is a rich experience that one has gathered for the past uh, 11 years in my case. I have got my senior sitting here who has put 13-14 years. I have got my ex-commanding officer sitting next to you sir. And I have got deputy commander sitting behind the last row. <laughs> We have got so much experience and this experience has come by the virtue of interacting with so many people. By 11 years you know the pulse of a person, even if you are not talking to that person, by seeing his expressions, his body language, you can judge a person. Because believe me, the true test of a character of a person is when he is in trouble. In good times everybody will be good to you. If you want to judge a person, judge him in bad times. And the bad time comes in the life of an army person when you are in, you know, when you are in a firefight or you are facing hard situation you come to know a true character of a person. Happening between the main character Casey and supposedly his dreaded enemy who is Garmin. So it goes as, uh, you can forget about her Casey, she is not coming back. Said Garmin as he crouched on pain, as he crouched in pain on the ground. Yes he is, said Casey, trying to stand up, at the same time striking another blow to Garmin with a clenched fist. I am going to get her back, but you won't be around to witness it, you worthless piece of scum. Ha! Checked Garmin, barely managing to sit on his knees as he looked at Casey. Yes, I will die today at your hands, Kenneth, but I'll rest thereafter. But you, on the other hand, will suffer for eternity because I have taken her from you. You will never see her again. You will never feel her touch nor her breath. Yes, you will live on, but your life would be worse than your end, I assure you. You will beg for death, but it will never come to you. Even luck will not dare to be on your side. And then Casey says, All days are good for me. All numbers are lucky for me. I don't care what the stones have to say. The stars don't need to be aligned to change my day, replied Casey, taking his saber and pressing it firmly against Garmin's neck. And as far as she is concerned, I will see her again. I will have her by my side, even if it means I have to travel across time and matter. Even I have to alter everything as we know it, I will do it. 
Garmin looked at Casey and closed his eyes, waiting for the inevitable. Garminian declared Casey as loudly as he could and he kept his saber under Garmin's chin. Your end will not be as pleasant as you wished. Your end will not be as pleasant as you wished. Your deeds will travel across time. The past, the present and the future will know about your pathetic existence. All the garments will despise you. So will the humans and all the beings in the third three sectors of the known universe. The glory you so much wished will never be yours. Not in this time, not in other, any other time. Die Garmanian, declared Kesi, as he raised his saber for justice, for righteousness and for love.